Since its doors first opened onto Royal Street in 1886, the Hotel Monteleone, like the city around it, has changed, and it has remained the same. Through expansions, renovations, and redecorations under five generations of Monteleones, it is now, as it was then, the very height of the vaunted hospitality of New Orleans. An immigrant from Sicily, Antonio Monteleone, worked as a cobbler of fine standing before purchasing the then 64-room hotel on the corner of Royal and Iberville streets. Originally known as the Commercial, the building was reopened bearing the family name, ensuring the Monteleone legacy, and establishing what is now one of the last great family-owned hotels in the country. By the time of his death in 1913, Antonio would be eulogized in the pages of the Daily Picayune as pioneer shoe manufacturer, hotel proprietor, banker, promoter, and a man of affairs generally. If the Monteleone is a family affair, that designation surely extends to its employees. Many of the staff have been with the hotel for decades, and the warmth of their hospitality has proved a draw over the years to a storied clientele. A distinguished line of authors particularly have favored the Monteleone, many of them penning the hotel into their stories. Truman Capote even claimed to be born here, a loving untruth. Literary suites named for these writers pay homage to their contribution to American letters. William Faulkner began his career as a writer living nearby in the French Quarter. The Monteleon was known to be Faulkner's favorite hotel, frequently serving as a backdrop in his New Orleans set stories. Tennessee Williams was a regular fixture at the Carousel Bar, enjoying a drink while gathering inspiration for plays like the Rose Tattoo and a streetcar named Desire. Anne Rice, Eudora Welty, Ernest Hemingway, Richard Ford, and many others have called this place home, if just for a moment. In point of fact, the Monteleone is one of only three hotels in the nation to be declared a literary landmark. A number of literary events headquartered here keep this history alive. The Tennessee Williams Festival, Pen to Press, and the Pirate's Alley Faulkner Society's Words and Music Festival. But neither hospitality nor history alone would serve without the luxury the Monteleone has always offered. At the turn of the 20th century, ceiling fans, in-room radios, and private baths were considered a lavish extravagance. The bar of today's standards is somewhat higher, and it is cleared with the same ease. Indulgent amenities like the rooftop pool or catered event spaces make any visit to the Monteleone memorable be it a business meeting or a wedding banquet. Within these walls, comfort and leisure are never far away. Guests can shed the stresses of the world in the full-service day spa or fitness room. But perhaps the greatest asset on offer is the gateway out onto the Crescent City. It has been said that the French Quarter begins in the lobby of the Hotel Monteleone. From a room here, a guest has access to the very best of New Orleans' vibrant culture. World Street bustles with antique shops and fine art. World famous restaurants and music clubs are only steps away all throughout this historic neighborhood. and a few blocks stroll brings you to the banks of the Mississippi. Of course, all that culture just doesn't stay outside. The hotel itself is steeped in the things that make this city great. New Orleans is famous, or infamous, for inventing the cocktail and its love affair with liquor. The Vieux Carré cocktail was first mixed right here in 1938. 
The name comes from the French Old Square, and it is often applied to the French Quarter. Every year, Tales of the Cocktail, a celebration of the craft of cocktails, has its opening festivities here in the Carousel Bar. Bearing the rather whimsical distinction of being the city's only rotating bar, the Carousel was first opened in 1949 and has been a favorite destination of drinkers for all the years since. Food, too, is dear to the city's heart. In Criollo Restaurant, guests have access to fine dining without even setting foot outdoors. Criollo, Spanish for Creole, refers to the mix of cultures that defines New Orleans cuisine. Flavors from French, Spanish, Caribbean, and African cooking combined with Louisiana ingredients and a modern taste. More than perhaps anything else, New Orleans is known for its music. Jazz was born in this city, and here in the Hotel Montleon, it is alive and well. Such famed acts as Louis Prima and even Liberace played regular engagements in their day. And the talents of New Orleanian musicians are still on display in the Carousel Lounge. Living in New Orleans in 1922, the author Sherwood Anderson wrote, I love something basically cultural in the life here. Culture means first of all the enjoyment of life, a sense of leisure, and a background of joy in life in which to refresh the tired spirits. Anderson was writing of the city, but might as well have meant the Hotel Montleon. Those same qualities of leisure, of joy, of culture are embodied here as they have been since Antonio Monteleon launched this landmark, the heart of New Orleans, in 1886.